Hello everyone, welcome to Tech Valley. So today we are going to discuss one of the famous uh, cloud platform, Cloud Foundry. So before starting the Cloud Foundry, let's remind the previous five lecture. So my first lecture was environment setup in which we learned how to set up the environment on local machine for creating the microservices. In my second lecture, we set up the free developer accounts with the Cloud Foundry. In my third lecture, we discuss what is the microservice and its basic feature. In my fourth lecture, I introduce Offspring Boot and its benefits over the legacy Spring framework service. And in my last and the fifth lecture, we learned how to create the Spring Boot REST microservice. Now we are ready to play on the cloud with the microservices because in our last five lectures we have learned how to create the basic Spring Boot microservice. So now we are going to play around that microservice over the cloud, how we can scale that microservice on the cloud, how we can start that microservice on the cloud, how we can push that microservice on the cloud. So, so in my today's lecture, we are going to start the Cloud Foundry, the introduction of Cloud Foundry and the basic architecture of Cloud Foundry. Foundry, so Cloud Foundry is one of the cloud platform. It is open source platform and due to this, it is very rich in terms of languages and framework. It supports many languages like Java, Ruby, Python, along with the rich frameworks like Spring. So as we said it is an open source platform so it can be deployed on our own computing infrastructure as well as any market available is uh, like aws vsphere openstack etc so why we need this platform what is the benefits of cloud foundry over the legacy platform so anyone can deploy apps and services in a few minutes without knowing any deep knowledge of platform. What it means, if a developer want to manage its application over the Cloud Foundry, it is very easy. The scaling up and scaling down of application is very easy on the Cloud Foundry. Uh, if the traffic is very high at a particular time, so we can increase the number of instances of application. If the traffic is low, we can decrease the number of instances at runtime. So in short, what we can say, it makes the developer life easy if any developer want to manage its own application on the Cloud Foundry infrastructure without knowing the deep knowledge of Cloud Foundry platform infrastructure. Now let's discuss the brief inside story of Cloud Foundry. So complete Cloud Foundry is managed by two type of VMs, host VMs and component VMs. So host VM are used to manage apps and services deployed by the outside world on the Cloud Foundry. While the component VMs are used to manage the internal Cloud Foundry components like router, cloud controller, service broker, etc. So it was the brief introduction of Cloud Foundry. Now let's discuss about the components of Cloud Foundry and the architecture of Cloud Foundry. So these are the seven basic components of Cloud Foundry. Router, OAuth server and login server. Cloud Controller, and Sync, Diego Brain, and Cell Repo. Blob Storage, Diego Cell, the Garden Container, we can say. Service Broker, BBS, Consult, Nets, and Messaging Bus. For Matrix and Logging, Matrix Collector, and App Logger. This is the high level architecture of Cloud Foundry, which contains the seven layers. Routing layers, which handle the complete traffic which comes on the Cloud Foundry. Authentication layer 
which is used to create the users and uh, assign the role to different kind of users applications layer which is used to manage the app life cycles which means uh, application deployments run stop start all operations handled by this layer app storage and execution layer this layer is used to store the application data and the content which we deploy on the cloud foundry service layers is a layer which introduce the different services uh, published on the cloud foundry and these services can be used uh, by the internal or external applications messaging layer is a layer which is a communication mode between all uh, other components metrics and logging layer this layer is used to redirect the metrics and logs to the external uh, metrics log platforms so let's discuss each component of cloud foundry one by one the router is responsible to handle all incoming traffic on the cloud foundry it routes incoming requests to appropriate components if the request is related to internal components it routes there if the request is related to external hosted app it routes to that particular app and complete the request so how the router internally work so it periodically queries the diego bulletin system bbs to determine which cell and container are up with which application and then router updates its routing table so when a new request come router goes to the routing table get the information where need to route the request and entertain the request successfully so this second layer components uaa and the login server these components are used to create the users and assigning to the roles around that users so that later on if we want to log in on the cloud foundry we can use these users and perform the particular operations which is bound with that particular role so this third layer components cloud controller and sync diego brain cell repo are responsible to handle the application life cycle the cloud controller it controls the deployment of app what it means if we give the instruction to cloud foundry deploy an app so that command goes to the cloud controller and then cloud controller order the diego brain using cc bridge components stage and run the particular application so we can say cloud controller is responsible to pushing the app and to running the app on the cloud foundry and these nsync diego brain and cell repo are the supporting components of cloud controller let's discuss one by one nsync bbs and cell repo nsync nsync receive a message from cloud controller when the user scales an app and it writes the number of instances into the desired lrp and bbs it is responsible to monitor the desired lrp and actual lrp values if desired lrp value and actual lrp values are different then it goes to the containers and it sees new instance required to run or or extra instances are running which are required to kill the last one cell repo it monitor the container and provides the actual lrp values the fourth layer components the blob storage and diego cell is basically storage system the blob storage stores the large binary files like application code package build pack and droplets cell repository manage the life cycle 
of containers and process running inside the Diego cell VMs. So what exactly these Diego cell VMs are? So Diego cell VMs are the independent small VMs which contains the garden container. And these garden containers contain the executable app. So we can say the independent one VMs which is responsible to run the applications is called Diego cell. The fifth layer component, the service broker is responsible for the fifth layer component service broker are the components which help application to provide them external or internal service instances. For example, I want to run an application on CF which needs a database as a service. So database service broker will provide the database instance to that application. The sixth layer component console and BBS. These components help all other components to communicate with each other. Metrics and logging components. So metrics and logging components are log aggregator and matrix collector. These are responsible to redirect the logs and metrics on a particular platform like Grafana, Kibana, Gray logs, etc. Thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe our channel.